Okay, this is a different way of looking at division than most of us are used to. So here is how you look at an area model backwards to help you visualize what's going on in our partial products. So if you look at this part of an area model, there's 23 squares going down. I know if I have 23 times a number, it will give me my total inside that box. I'm actually dividing 9,775 by 23. So I want to have 9,775 inside this box right here. I need that many little tiny squares. What? How many columns would I need with 23 in each column to get me that many squares? So let's think about what I know about 23 first. So if I go over here, I know that 23 times 10 is 230. I also know that 23 times 100 is 2,300. That's going to be pretty helpful to get me to this larger number. I could keep dividing by 10 every time, but it's going to take me a while to, to get rid of all of those numbers. So um, what some people like to do also is to double this amount. If 100 set groups of 23 is this much, 200 groups is going to be twice as large, or 4,600. That number looks really good right there too. I can also do some other mental math over here. Three chunks of 100 is three times bigger, or a chunk of 100 and a chunk of 200 is going to give me a total of these. Or I can think about it this way. I could add these together, or 3 times 23 is 69, and it's in the hundreds place. That's a really good number to use for this too. So I could keep playing with my numbers, trying to find easy numbers to multiply by 23. Since this number is getting pretty close to the 9,000, I'm going to use this one first. I'm going to mark off an estimated box of 6,900 squares out of my total of 9,775. 6,900 divided by 23 is 300. So an array that's 300 times 23 will give me 6,900 squares. When I look at my partial quotients over here, I can divide 9,775 by 23 300 times to get a partial product here of 6,900 And then I'm going to subtract to see how many squares I have left to find in my area model. Seventeen minus nine is eight. Eight minus six is two. Okay, I still have two thousand eight hundred seventy-five squares left to put in on my model. I'm going to look back at the numbers that I know, and try to find a number that's going to get me close to two thousand eight hundred seventy-five. Um. I'm going to use this one. 23 times 100 will give me 2,300. So 23, that's this distance here, times 100 will give me an area of 2,300. Let's see how many more squares I need to find now. So I'm going to divide, I divided by a group of 100 groups of 23, which gave me 2,300. Which I still need to find 575 little squares. So far I've divided by 300 and 100, so there's 400 something for my answer. All right, 575, this is going to be too big. Let me go back to small number. I'm gonna try a chunk of 10. 
because 23 times 10 is 230. So 23 times 10 gives me a block of 230 squares. So if I subtract those 230 squares, not enough room on this paper. <laughs> By a group of 10, I still have 345 blocks left. I'm going to do another group of 10 times 23, which is 230. I'm going to subtract 230 again. That was another group of 10. Okay, so I still have 115 blocks. Hmm, 10's too big. Uh, let me see, maybe, maybe let's try 23 times 5. That's 108. Is that right? No, it's not. Let's think about this again. Because 23 times 5, 5 times 3 is 15, not 8. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. That's the number I'm looking for, 115. So that's not my number I added instead of multiplied. Okay, so 115, there's 115 squares left. And to get that, I did 23 times 5. So I'm going to go back over here and divide by 5, which gave me 115. Now I'm down at the end. I have no leftovers. Now to find my final quotient, I have all of these partial quotients partial answers to the division problem. I'm going to put all of these together. I'm going to add all of these together, or I can add all of these numbers. Tell me how long it is on this side of each box. So if I add all of these numbers together, I'm going to get 425 as my final quotient. And here should be the same, 3, 425. 425 is my final quotient. So this is called the partial quotients method. And over here, we used a area model to show what it looks like in chunks. This is another strategy that is possible. Um, the students were saying today that this is more efficient, but this gives you a visual of what it's really doing when you're dividing up areas into different chunks. Okay, hopefully that clarifies a little bit, and enjoy your division. Bye.